welcome to the Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy channel's Holistic Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Beverly. Today we have a wonderful guest, Daniela Hartman, who lives a life of a seeker of inner truth, having worked as a journalist, UN employee, to then deep dive for 20 years into Tibetan Buddhist philosophy and meditation in India and Nepal. Today, she supports people in finding their way home to their inner truth, finding, sorry, to their inner truth using her learnings. Today, she will talk about uh, we are all just walking each other home. Doesn't that sound interesting? Welcome, Danielle. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever we are. Hello. Well, let's see. Where I am, it's morning. Where you are, it's probably getting to be evening, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and so tell everyone where you are. Um, at the moment, I'm in uh, Germany. I'm in Munich, Germany. So that's um, where I'm from. Yeah, Beautiful. so I'm home. That's where my brother was born. <laughs> well, tell us your transformational story, how you got started, and especially with India and Nepal and Buddhism and all of that. That's very interesting. Well, I grew up extremely internationally. My parents kind of had the first move with me when I was six months old. We went from Germany to France, so I grew up bilingual. And then to Switzerland and back to Germany when I was only seven. I went uh, to the U.S. for a bit of high school and then to an international school here in Germany, in Munich, the European school with English as mother tongue. So I had people from Iran, from Israel, from Cameroon in my class. And I always loved an international flair. Um, So then I studied uh, journalism, international politics or political science and international relations and thought about where could I go that is like seriously international. So that was the UN. And I uh, joined the UN in New York and Geneva and uh, South Africa. And I loved this um, environment of having very complex issues, people with different interests and how to solve them, how to work with it. But at the other, on the other hand, it's also very challenging, right? Because people make decisions and it was hard for my, for my inner being to support some of these decisions, especially around giving aid to people. Who gets aid? Who doesn't get aid? What are you know the, uh, the privileges and, and all of that? And for me, I had to step back and see what, can I do a career like that and sort of compartmentalize and say, well, you know, you, you leave out certain sections of a population and you favor another and, and uh, the decision obviously not being, being mine. So I thought I want to look into where does greed come from? Where do these judgments come from? And Buddhism was a natural answer for me. I mean, you have done a lot of Buddhist studies as well. Is well, how does our mind function? You know, how do we perceive things? How do we create our world with our uh, with our mind and our thinking? And how are we actually all connected? And how do we influence the world as beings and and the best way possible? And so I went to India and I started studying there. And I lived in a monastery because it was um, important for me to see how actually uh, the Buddhist principles were used in everyday life. And I loved it. I loved hearing about love and compassion and meditation and taking your own mind as the principle from which to uh, then be the agent of. I mean, I'm sure you know a little bit of Tibetan, but the Tibetan word for Buddhist is Nangpa, meaning the one who looks inside. And that was such a paradigm shift from the Western world, you know, where everything is outside and material and and having to show off at the outside and be somebody in the world and all of these things. So for me, it was a beautiful thing, which I wanted to pass on. So I worked as a translator and a supporter of uh, different uh, lamas, Rinpoche's or teachers and traveled the world with them, supported their charitable uh, foundations, 
Dharma centers. But then when COVID struck, there were a lot of people coming up to me from the West saying, hey, Daniela, suddenly we have time. What's about this meditation thing? And uh, how do I actually work with me now that the outer world has changed so drastically? Because before everybody had a system, right? The, the path was so clear and suddenly everything crumbled. And I learned that what I had in my pocket, in my tool box, a box is, is very fit for the time. And so I have started the grid blueprint, but that's my story. So up till then. Well, I think that's really important. And the West does need that. You're right, because it's all external and they need to learn how to go within. And we just didn't get that in um, even, I think even when we pray, at least the way I was raised, it wasn't a going within kind of prayer. It was still outward directed and what can I get, that kind of thing, um, versus, you know, how do I help myself and fix myself and so I can be a better person? <laughs> you know, that wasn't what I learned as a kid. Um, so yeah, those are great lessons. So when you work with people, how do you do that? And tell us what grid blueprint, what all that means. Well, I sat down with, with a good friend of mine and mentor of mine, and I told her what I, you know, what I had in mind, how do I present these Buddhist principles and what I had learned in a way that is easily accessible. So this is how I started to have a Buddhism-based uh, philosophical practice. In the beginning, I thought I would go into coaching, but it's not so much about optimizing ourselves. It's more about these deep contemplations and inquiries. Um, and as you know, uh, being so familiar with the Buddhist teachings as well, we have these tosam gum, we call it in Tibetan, we first learn then we contemplate and we really pick out what, what is actually resonating with me? What do I need? And then we go into gum, which is often translated as meditation, but goes deeper into becoming familiar with something, really embodying. And that is kind of the, the pathway or that I take people through, through the grid. And grid G is for uh, growth or impermanence. How do we become who we are and how can we use the present moment as a gateway to the future. And R is responsibility, to take responsibility of our body, speech, and mind through awareness um, and through the understanding what's the difference for me between ego and a healthy self. You know, ego being separate, you know, wanting its advantage, uh, seeing others also as threat, and a healthy self seeing ourselves in connection and in collaboration and in interdependence with others and, and the, the world around us. So how do, I, how do we strengthen, the, strengthen that and work from that? That's our responsibility. I is integrity. What are our values? How do we wanna live them? Which ones are negotiable for us? Which ones are not negotiable for us? All of these things. And diversity is the D, and diversity is the inner diversity that we have. We're all a hundred people rolled into one. We, we know we're mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, employees, whatever, we have a, social, a certain social standing. And then we have to work in a very diverse world where we are faced with different things all the time. So how do I use when I use uh, this growth, responsibility and integrity, which is really the internal part where we really determine what is my inner guidance systems? Who am I? What do I stand for? What do I want to bring into the world? That's, just, that's like the connection to ourselves. And I think that is paramount to be a healthy person and then be authentic. And D then diversity is really the connection to the people around us on, on one level and then the connection to the outer world. How do we serve? What is our product? What is, you know, who do we are in the world and, and how do we get a resonance with the world? Yeah, so this is what I do and the blueprint is just who are we originally deep down inside? And again, you know, Bud Buddhism, well, we talk about Buddha nature or, you know, divine spark, source, this beautiful, brilliant 
being that we all are inside to really unearth that and live that in everyday life. So this is why I always talk about we all, I'm just, sorry, we're all just walking each other home. So I don't see myself as a teacher. I see myself rather as a guide, a supporter, and somebody who asks questions for people's inner work. Yeah, all, all we can do, what I say is I, I'm going to show you where the door is. I'm going to tell you how to open it. It's up to you to go through. <laughs> we can't do it for them. They have to do it for themselves. And responsibility, integrity, that is so important, especially today. I just don't see a lot of it. People don't take responsibility for themselves, and there's a lack of integrity. People think it's okay to lie and cheat and yeah, those are just really, really important. But when you go within and you find out inside you're wealthy and you're powerful and you don't need the outside. And and eventually you just learn to trust and everything you need comes to you as you need it. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to go and grab and I'm going to get this and I'm going to hang on to it. And that just clogs up the flow, <laughs> you know. So that's great. Um, so you work one-on-one -on -one with people when you're helping them. So how do you have a process you use? How how does that work? I at the moment I do work one-on-one -on -one because that's what I enjoy most. I just love to see people bloom and you know go into their power. But in future I'll definitely do more workshops. I just started actually last year, beginning of 23. That's really when I moved back to, to Europe. Mm. Um, what I do is first is kind of an amnesis. We kind of look, where are you at? You know, what, what do the people see as their boulders in their path? Uh, where is there a disharmony within them between what they feel they want to be or do and how they present themselves to the outside? And then we unpack and we look at these different things, you know, what is growth? Uh, what is responsibility, what is integrity and diversity for them. So it's very individual. I take good care that we're in a very safe space because people, I'm sure you, you've you probably had, or I'm certainly at the same experience, people want to be seen and they want to feel safe in their vulnerability. And that's when magic happens. Yeah, yeah being heard. Yeah, they want to feel they, they want to be heard. A lot of a lot of times when especially pa I see a lot of patients, not just clients. So I have patients and clients. Um, a lot of times they come in and they're sick because no one's listening to them. They don't you know, maybe they're in a marriage and they don't talk much anymore or they can't talk to their husband about whatever. Um, single women tend to have more girlfriends and then, you know, then they talk. <laughs> But that's that seems to be one of the big issues with with the patients is they they need someone to talk to in that safe space that they and know. Just, and um, sometimes people are not connected with themselves. So sometimes they don't well, even know what they want to express or how to express it and don't have the self-worth or the self-confidence to say, yeah, this is what I feel. This is where I am right now. And it's absolutely fine and OK. Yeah. Or uh, the other thing I, I find, too, is um, they'll say things and you'll they don't realize what they're saying. You know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, they have these thought processes, the negative thought processes that are creating barriers. And so as they start to talk and you hear it, I, I know one woman gave me her this story she when she came in and I, I looked at her and I said do you say that story to everybody all the time and she oh yeah I said well that's what you're manifesting <laughs> she goes oh I said let's rescript you a positive story <laughs> what did you learn what were the benefits um yeah it's that's challenging so um so you're you're working internationally though you're working one-on-one -on -one, but you work over zoom is that what you do and work in absolutely Absolutely. I, I work all over the world uh, with people in the U.S. and Germany, um, everywhere, wherever and, people want to have my services. And what languages can they work with you in? German and uh, English. 
German and English. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I do have an international audience, so there may be some. I know sometimes people, even though they're bilingual, they'll prefer a certain language over another, especially when they get emotional. So that's nice to know they can use German with you. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about Ram Das because you were mentioning um, uh, walking each other home. Talk a little bit about that. What I love about Ram Das is um, he was one of the early seekers, right? He was in the 60s, 70s. He used to be in, in Harvard, and then he started um, playing around with psychedelics. He got kicked out. He went to India. And when you hear or listen to his uh, YouTube, for example, there's a lot, a lot of teachings out on YouTube. He was He really describes the spiritual practice from a very human heart. You know, how we have all these little hangups and how we want to be holy. And, and you know, then we figure out we're not holy yet. And, uh, there's this beautiful story about how close he is to his teacher and how special he is. And then one day he comes and there, there's this whole group of Westerners and, and he can't even get close to his teacher. And his teacher is not even looking at him. And he just flares up with jealousy because he thinks he's so much more spiritual than everybody else. And just the way he talks out, all of us have these hangups on our spiritual journey. But one thing that I really liked um, and that I see in the spiritual community now that I'm a little bit into, into the Western world as well, he talks a lot about grounding. Uh, one of his teachers once said, well, you all want to, you all aspire to be gods and deities and go to higher dimensions. Well, guess what? You're reborn in a human body. That means you want to have the human experience. So all the emotions come with it. It's kind of a package deal, right? So to escape them doesn't, doesn't work. We have to have this, how do you say this, this beautiful manure, manure <laughs> of the human psyche to integrate and be in our bodies and be present here and now. That's something that I, I really like about uh, Ram Dass. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I think um, <clears throat> that part of our purpose is to learn how to be organic and in a body because it's the only way we can hug each other. It's the only way you can walk along the beach and feel the sand in your feet and the sun on your face and the wind in your hair. Uh, it's the only way you can touch a tree or listen to a bird because outside of 3D, you don't have any of that. So you have to come to third dimension to get it. But in third dimension, we have to deal with the fact we die, we can kill each other, we can be good, or we can not be so good. And somehow we have to learn all of that. And I think that's Source's goal is, is, well, aside from the fact that Source is just learning who who am I, what am I, I'm conscious now that I'm conscious, what am I? And that's kind of what we're learning. We're conscious. What does that mean? What am I? What What do we do? How do I live a happy life? Um, how can I be successful? And what is success? Does that mean having money, having power? Or does that mean being at peace and uh, having loving relationships? I mean, what does it mean? And everybody on earth has different values and how do they mesh? And like going, you were talking about the UN, you go to different countries, they have completely different values in some countries and some continents even, they're just totally different from other continents. Um, how do you resolve that? And I think that's part of our human experience and training and why diversity in your grid is so important is to learning to accept the fact that we're all different. And that's okay, <laughs> because it's just another aspect of us learning how to integrate and be happy in different values that we're trying out. Anyway, that's how I see it. And also being different is enriching. I mean, the other day I was kind of thinking about what does it mean to be limitless? Because it's it's one of these words. And actually, for me, it's collaborations, Mm. You know, meeting other people, dipping into their experiences, how they see the world, uh, opening up to others. That's for me how we uh, we get to be uh, to be limitless. Well, that, uh, I, I, I almost said it kills paradigms with that kind of sounds strong, but it it let's say it 
it breaks open with paradigms because we can only see it's like a, a horses with the blinders on. And then when someone breaks a paradigm, all of a sudden our vision expands. And so the more paradigms we break, the broader our vision is. So that's why I like doing things international because you just learn so much from different people. <laughs> yeah, and if you are well rooted in yourself, you know, it's it's like being then a tree uh, or a bamboo in the wind. You know, you can go, you can fold, you can be, but you still know who you are, you know, and you don't get lost mm -hmm. in what people tell you or how you have to be or all of these things. So this is why, for me, authenticity is so important. And walking each other home is like, what is my home? It's a bit different from yours, but we have the same foundation as humans as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're born, we have kids, we die, <laughs> get married, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Um, so tell us about your free grid, gift, free grid session that you're offering. What is that about? Oh, it's having coffee with me, which I just love. I love meeting people and just hanging out with them for an hour and just see what, what is on their mind what would their way home be, you know, and to make a little map with them, you know, what stations would they have, what do they see is in their path right now blocking them, uh, what do they think would bring them forward. So to work with somebody on like mapping out their grid, that's what I really, really enjoy uh -huh. doing. So there's a free, free hour of doing that with me. And I get oh. out of it just as much as the person. So I'm not, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a selfish thing in a way because it's so much fun. Well, you know, I think I learn as much from my patients and clients as they get from me. So I agree with that. And it is fun to meet more people. So for those of you on YouTube, the link will be down below. And for those of you listening on the podcast, the link is the grid, one word, the grid dot global forward slash book dash online so it's the grid.global forward slash book dash online to get your free one hour session grid session with daniela that sounds great so daniela do you have any closing remarks for us oh there's always something i have to think about for a second but um i think walking each other home is based on kindness and that is something that I, I find is so important these days that we're kinder to ourselves, first of all, because we're all doing an amazing job living in these times that are so turbulent and kinder to each other or because it's, it's, a, it's a challenging world and we're all doing great. So we should really have that in mind. That is the most important for me, kindness. That's a good lesson. I like that. Um, I think trolling got to be pretty bad for a couple of years, and that seems to be calming down. Either that or I blocked all the trolls. I don't know <laughs> what's happened, but I see less trolling today, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Be Absolutely. Calm. Yeah. Good words. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you for being our guest today. And for everyone listening, thank you for joining us. And if you would like and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And remember to be the light you want to see in the world.